Computing is often the backbone of large-scale scientific research, providing high-fidelity simulations, high-speed data processing of huge banks of information, and allowing the performance of billions or even trillions of equations simultaneously. We call this kind of computing supercomputing, and the field is approaching a big change to its capacities. In this September SMTR preview, we're looking at what's next in the world of supercomputing. Lawrence Livermore National Lab is home to some of the fastest supercomputers in the world, and we're always investigating how we can continue into the future with even more computing speed and power. Supercomputers around the world are currently capable of petascale computing, but the world of scientific computing is moving towards exascale computing. To make the leap from one to the other, many developments need to occur in computer hardware, software, and scientific codes. Since Livermore is at the forefront of these computer science fields, we have embarked on six projects that will develop solutions to the challenges imposed by the coming changes. This initiative is supported by a competitive lab funding program that grants money to promising, boundary-pushing projects that approach a problem from many angles and may take a few risks. Barry Roundtree, for example, is the lead on one of these projects, which aims to reduce something called data movement, and thus increase power efficiency in new computer systems. We're standing outside our supercomputing center here at Livermore, and rather than be in it, we're showing you the transmission yard for how we get electricity into the building. This is really important in going from petascale computing to exascale computing, we're trying to get a machine a thousand times faster, but only uses three times as much electric. At the moment, we're saying, if this machine was running flat out on every node, how much power would it take? And we provision electricity to meet that demand. Unfortunately, for most of our codes, we hit this peak power very rarely. So what my work does, and several postdocs, several PhD students here as well, is figure out, can we buy a machine that's twice as big and then manage the power so that that total machine draw doesn't go above what we're bringing into the building. We don't want to blow any circuit breakers, but we want to get as much science per dollar done as we can. On the software side of things, Sanio Kolev and his team are looking to improve the fidelity of shock hydrodynamic simulations, creating frameworks that improve the efficiency and accuracy of essential simulations on the new generation of computers. We have been developing in Livermore for a very long time um, um, large-scale simulation codes uh, to model physical phenomena on the supercomputers we have. Uh, and our project is involved with a new approach to the simulation um, that is more efficient, uh, that can utilize these supercomputers much better. So this approach is um, based on how the finite elements. Finite elements are one of the ways in which you can um, create simulations. And you can think of the finite elements as, as, as the building blocks of the simulation. We've been trying to understand finite elements and control them when we apply them to the type of simulations that the lab is interested in. And these are compressible flow simulations where you, the solution is not well behaved, it's not smooth. You have discontinuities due to shocks, extreme energies, extreme temperatures, extreme pressures, uh, multiple materials that creates another uh, type of discontinuity. And, and to, to control this, you have to understand it mathematically, you have to understand the physics, you have to implement it efficiently on uh, the supercomputers we have. So it's really a, it's a team effort. It's a combination of mathematicians and physicists and computer scientists working together, which is one of the great things about the lab. But what about after exascale computing? At a certain point, the computing systems that we have now will reach a threshold of speed and power past which they cannot go in their current physical structure. This is a central tenet of Moore's law. But Livermore is even working on solutions to this quandary. Researchers are starting to work with neuromorphic computing systems that work more like brains than computers. And they're also exploring quantum computing, which will perhaps prove to be the biggest step yet in the evolution of computing. To learn more details about each of these projects, you can read the full article in SNTR's September issue. 
This issue also contains pieces on advancements made in hydrogen vehicles, updates to an important observatory, and the general formatting of nuclear data. If you want more on current supercomputing at Lawrence Livermore, visit the link down in the description box, and thanks for watching.